Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm gonna to take a look at something a little bit different. This is a three-in-one land, air, and water craft. So it is a drone, but it also will allow you to drive it around on the ground or in the water. Now this is called the X-Wind, as we can see here on the rather generic box that it comes in. And the model number for this is the GB2001, and it comes in blue and red, and of course we have it in blue. Now the unique thing about this is it actually is like a little quadcopter drone, whatever you want to call it. I would call this a whoop. We often refer to these as little whoops. And it actually will detach from the actual foam body and allow you to throw it in the air and fly it as a drone. If you don't want to fly as a drone, you can actually drive it around on the ground in the ground mode. It needs to be a slick surface because there's no wheels on the bottom of this. And on water, I got my pool open now and this is gonna be a perfect uh, spot to be able to test out the water mode. Now to detach this guy from the actual foam, you have to press this button in the back and then the drone will actually detach from the body. That's what's unique about this because I've done a couple of these over the years. Um, there's a WL Toys I did that sort of like would transform by pressing a button on the controller, which is pretty cool but it didn't, it didn't fly great because you're flying around with the body of the boat on it. It was you know, kind of clumsy and heavy. This is neat because you can take it off and then of course you're going to need to rotate the props. So you just rotate the whole uh, whoop sort of uh, ducted fans they call this into position and now that they're all um, horizontal here then you can throw it in the air. We actually probably didn't want to throw it, but take off from the ground and fly this as a regular quadcopter. And then you can, of course, switch and put it back on the body. So you just snap it back on here. And once you do, you need to rotate these rear back into place so you have the air moving out the back, sort of like a swamp buggy type, swamp boat type deal you know, where they have the fans blowing it along, out the back and moves along on the ground or on the water. You need a little bitty controller, and we'll go over the controls for this in just a moment, because there are those three modes you have to be uh, mindful of. You have your instruction manual here, which we'll look at for the controls. They give you a little charger, it says USB, and it uses a micro low C, because they give you two batteries. The battery, um, these are they don't say the capacity on these, but I can tell they're one S. These that micro low C connector. Um, the, the flight or run time on these is not advertised as too terribly long. So it's nice to give you two because if you want to go between flying as a drone, then you want to attach it as a, to the boat and drive it as a boat, you're not going to get enough run time out of one pack. So what we'll probably do in the review is I plan on taking it up and flying it as a drone first. And then I'll take it down on the ground and do a little bit of land and then of course the water mode using the other battery pack on these. Um, let's see, they, they, have, they do have the, uh, the charge and run time listed in here. And it says that the run time is about six minutes. So again, that's not gonna give you much time. And the charge time on this is about an hour to get this charged. They give us some spare props here. They're, mar they're labeled A and B. So you have to make sure you put A's on, you know, A would be, as you can see, I'll put the props back as A here and B here. They're diagonal, that's how all drones work. Um, so that the craft doesn't sit there and rotate in circles if all the props are uh, spinning in the same direction. When they spin opposite directions, then the props have to be angled differently so that the wind is all moving in the correct direction as well. So let's take a look at the, a closer look at the controller and go over the controls on this guy before we get it outside to that review. All right guys, I got the uh, controller out here in front of me and I got it turned on. As you can see, it is a full manual, what we call full manual. I think technically that's probably acro mode, but besides from the stabilization of the drone, uh, you have no altitude hold at all on this. You got your pitch and your roll over here on the side. So pretty much you got your trims here. And then over here you have pressing right is your headless mode. And left here is gonna switch us between those three modes. So actually red here, this is actually your flight mode when it's red. And then if you uh, want to uh, do some 360 flips here, I believe that is gonna be the this right here. You can see it over here on the, on the sheet. 360 flips is six, it's up here at the top. 
It's your 360 flips. One here is gonna be your high and low rate. Uh, this is what they label one, the upper left bumper. So if you go ahead and we switch modes, and let's go to the blue. This is going to be your uh, ground mode. They show the ground mode controls there. And essentially you just have your throttle and your steering. And then that's pretty much it on this one. Of course, you can just switch your modes. And then if you want to go, let's see, I think it has a, um, I thought it had a, yeah, one key, one key rotating. So number six there, which is going to be that, what would be the 360 flip. This is going to have, let the, uh, I believe the craft's going to do this on the ground. It's going to spin around, I think, uh, is what it does. So on whenever you're in the drone mode, that's just going to be your 360 flips. And I don't think this had any, I may have said it had auto y'all, but I think that's just in the ground mode where it's sort of doing like that the spin outs. And then if we switch over here to the, to the last page, we get over here to the uh, water surface mode. You can see it's pretty much the same thing, except for you don't have that uh, spinning mode. So you just go here again, and now we're in purple. And you can see here that it's just, you have your throttle, and it looks like that's pretty much it. Your throttle and your uh, rudder to steer over here. And that's it, there's not any, um, as far as I can see, there's not that like spinning mode, which would be difficult to do on water. If you have a slick surface on land, the craft should be able to spin around quite easily using sort of the fans in that point. The propellers are acting as fans. But in the water, that's not gonna work with all the drag, the surface tension of the water. All right, guys, as you can see, that's all that comes with this little three-in-one aircraft. I had this for quite a while, and I wanted to wait till the pool was open because I feel like this may not be something that's gonna be super, you know, reasonable to use in a lake or a pond because it doesn't have that ability to just take off and fly into the air like the other ones that I reviewed. So even though I do like this design because it gives you the ability to actually fly a quadcopter without the bulkiness of the body, it is a little less practical for the water mode. So in my pool, I know I can get it. It's not gonna get a bunch of gunk and junk on it. And I have an issue out in the water, I can recover it where if you're in a bigger lake and you land this, you can't just try to take off and out of the pond or lake and fly you're kind of screwed, it's gonna be stuck in the water. So again, I don't know how well the water mode will work, we'll have to see once we get it out there. So enough of that, let's go ahead and get this outside, fly as a drone, and then we'll get on the land on a slick surface, and then most importantly, the water, and see how it works in my pool. So I'll be right back. All right guys, let's take the drone out first and fly it, and then we'll do the land and the, the water modes after that. Now you do have to just press the battery in and get the micro low C connector lined up, and it just powers up when the battery is fully inserted, so there's no on and off switch. Then you just turn your controller on, do up, down, and bind it. And you very faintly see a blue light. Make sure it goes solid. Sometimes I've had trouble getting it to bind. And I think it could just be because I'm lifting it up and holding it while I'm trying to do it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to calibrate the gyro so it knows level. And that's going to be both sticks here down and out. So let me put it on the ground. And we're not going to be able to see this, but it's both sticks down and out. And hopefully that's working. I'll kind of move the sticks around there. My daughter's out here with me. She can be a bit noisy, so hopefully, you know, she doesn't uh, bother us too much. But we'll go ahead and try it now and take it up and see if it needs any trimming on this little guy. So let's go ahead and take off here and just give us some throttle and we'll fly it around. I'm going to put it into, there's actually three speed rates. I think it just mentioned two in the instruction manual. Let's just give us some throttle. Now the, the wind is blowing towards the drone, so uh, we won't be able to tell for sure if we need to trim it or not. But yeah, it looks about how I expected. Lots of times these whoops do use tri-blade props. Kind of surprised he didn't do that on this. Could be the size of motors they chose because tri-blade props would give the drone a little more a wind movement, a little more push, especially in those ground modes. We'll see how well that works on the ground mode. So that's pretty decent, y'all. Now, without, it, without the light um, being visible, this is going to be difficult for orientation at times, if you're, especially if you're a beginner. Yeah. Let's take it over here away from the pool in case we have any issues. Now let's try doing a few of those 360 flips first. 
I figured it would flip well when it does. Again, it's not very windy, but a little lightweight drone like this, the smallest amount of wind is going to make it struggle a little bit at times. So this is gonna be more of an indoor flyer, but like I said, on a really calm day you can do it. Today, it's sort of hit and miss, depending on how much wind we have at times. But yeah, that's pretty much what you expect out of the sky. Again, I think it'd be kind of cool experiment if you had some tri-blade props the right size to see how that affected the sky. It will reduce the flight time of hair if you were able to swap them just because you know you're getting you're creating more drag on the motors with the extra propeller. I don't know if I haven't even fit this so I'm not gonna mess with that but um, What'd you say, Bren? Gonna go in the hallway. See there, right now I'm getting my orientation a bit mixed up. We're gonna bring it back here. Don't wanna end up on, with it on the neighbor's house or my own. Oh, we hit the water. <laughs> it looks like it's okay. I'm gonna land it here. Just shake some water out of it. Now, that's one of the things when you're flying a drone like this without any altitude hold it is much easier to come down really really fast but I think you know the drone's fine and it's, it obviously is meant to be able to handle some water but that V that little boy I don't know if it's gonna show up in the video that blue light it's the only indication of the front of the drone so we'll take it up here for a moment again then I want to try the land mode again if they say a, a flight or run time of six minutes I think it's gonna really vary I think the drone mode is going to be sl uh, shorter than the land modes. Let's go ahead and take it up here. Now again, this is like a, like a 1S LiPo. So, you know, it's, it doesn't have a ton of power. Yeah, it's, the wind is kicking up at times. It's certainly uh, struggling a bit. I'm going to go ahead and land it. I think you guys see enough. I mean, again, this really would be something you want to fly. Um, on a, uh, I thought it was really calm today, but a day where there's really no breeze at all. My daughter's gonna pick it up here and bring it to me. Let me go ahead, even though the battery's not dead, let's swap packs, I have both charged. And we'll briefly try the land mode here, and then we'll try the, the, the water mode. In fact, let's just do the land mode now, because um, I should have enough battery to do that. We'll swap batteries for the water. That way we can make sure we get it back to the edge. But you're just gonna put those props up like this and then we have to put it into the foam body. So let's just go over here and grab that. We're just gonna snap this down. There should be plenty of battery here, we think, to at least do the land mode. I did test it very briefly and it does work on this sort of textured surface. Actually, maybe let's go to the driveway so I don't accidentally have it go off in the pool. Even though I could switch to the water mode then. That might be kind of cool, but uh, let's, uh, let's go out to the driveway real briefly so I just know that I have enough room. I'll be right back. All right, let's take it around the driveway where we know I'm not going to drive it off in the pool because I, I don't want to switch modes initially. We might try that when we go to the back, drive it off, and then see if we can switch to the water mode. But you're going to press on that, what would look like the yaw trim button to, on the left here, and we're going to go to the blue. Now, interestingly, the instruction manual says land mode is green, and that's wrong, because if you press it again, we go to purple, which is kind of hard to see. It looks almost the same. And purple is going to, of course, be our water mode. So let's go ahead and try it here. Again, the driveway is a bit textured. The edge of the uh, garage is slicker. Maybe I can get it in there for a moment. I can try that, but the, like I said, the spin out doesn't really work because I think there's too much uh, texture. So let's just go ahead and give it... That actually moves along pretty good. And of course you have no reverse, so let's see if we can turn it. Oh yeah, are we gonna go? Here we go. That moves along way better than you expect it would. It's blowing the chalk dust than I would have expected on a uh, textured surface. Oh, is it gonna make it up, Brent? Can you push it? Oh, oh uh, not like that. All right, guys, we got to get the drone back in there. She knocked it completely out. I'm going to snap it in there. Okay, very good. Thank you. She fixed it very easily. 
she must have bumped the button that unlocks it. But there's that, if I do that, that, see there's that spin and it says it's trying to and it doesn't really do it. I think it's just too much drag. Let me have it again, Bren. We're getting a lot of chalk dust. I'm sure it would work here on the edge. Let me just try it on the edge of the of the of the, of the uh, garage. If I try to, there, look. That's the spin out mode. You just press it again to cancel it. There's a the spin out mode. So the spin out mode absolutely works well. This this little guy works way better than I anticipated. Let's try it again here. And you can see it's just doing donuts. Press it again to stop it. When you try to do it here, see it kind of tries to, but it just can't because there's too much drag. So obviously on a uh, really slick surface, this little guy is gonna be even faster. It looks like a good old hovercraft, doesn't it? This is actually way more fun than, oh, it crashed into your shoe. This is way more fun than I anticipated. I did not expect the land mode to be very good. I was gonna kinda just briefly touch on it and go to the water. All right guys, I think that's enough for this. What we'll do now is I'm gonna swap batteries and uh, just try to shake some of this dust off the, of it from the chalk and we'll take it into the pool and see how the water mode does. We'll be right back. All right, let's see now how it does going into the pool. What I'm gonna do is I have it in, it's in uh, somebody must have bumped it, it was in air mode. Let's try the land mode, see if we can drive it into the pool, and then we'll switch it to the purple, which really should be sensitive, the same thing. It just it disables the auto spinning, which I'm sure doesn't work well at all in water. You're not gonna spin out really quick. Let's sit it down here, and just see if we can drive it off. Let's hope we don't flip it. All right, now let's just go ahead and switch to the purple, and now we're in the water mode. Oh, that's pretty darn cool. Again, it's not super fast, there's some drag. Um, a little bit slower than the, than the land mode, though I do think, again, the land mode would be faster on a really slick surface, like a linoleum floor or your slick concrete like your garage floor like I had it on there. It's probably pretty similar, it's, it's a little bit slower here. Again, this is pretty much all you're gonna do on the water mode, that y'all, even though the controller beeps, it disables that auto, well, it's not really y'all on land mode, the auto spin out. Yeah, this is, this is really fun. I gotta say, you know, I've flown a lot of drones, so the drone factor, nothing flashy. Pretty much what you expect. Uh, I, I love any watercrafts. When you just cut the throttle, it's just gonna float. I think I kind of like the land mode the best just because of that spin out that you can do on a slick surface. And the fact it's a little quicker than I expected, even on a textured surface, you know. So the water mo the water mode does work quite well. And you can see I can steer better on the water because even though there is a lot of surface tension, I think that, you know, the, the drag overall for you know, something like steering seems to be less than it was on the textured concrete. You know, it seems like it's a little quicker on the concrete for some reason. That could have been the driveway is slow. You know, we were going downhill at times. That really was going to accelerate the speed. Unfortunately, we can't take off and fly out of the water like some of those other three-in-one, like that big WL toys I mentioned earlier. But it has a pretty neat ripple there, and a little bit of a, of a, you know, the, the uh, propellers are really adding to some of the ripple. Let's see, are the front propellers moving? Yes, they are. So what I think it's doing is that front propeller sort of, the front props, I believe, are helping to sort of bring the craft off the water a little bit to reduce some of the drag. That's at least my guess. Otherwise, it seems like it would just make more sense to disable those so you can conserve some battery power. But it may, be, like I said, it may be a reason. They may be doing that to sort of make it act more like a hovercraft. You know, those big hovercrafts that have the, looks like big bags on the side and they, they'll go from ground to water. 
and they'll use that air to uh, lift it just a, you know, a, a smidgen off the water, an inch or so, so it can fly along the surface. All right, you gonna pull it out for me, Bren? Thank you. All right, all right, guys. This is a really neat little toy. I have a purchase link if you're interested. This, I think this would make a great gift for somebody, a younger person, especially someone who's got a pool and they want to be able to fly a drone and then toss it in their pool. Because you're not going to put this, put this in a big lake or something because, you know, it's just going to get junk in it and, you know, you don't have the ability to fly it out of the lake if it gets caught in a bunch of junk. So this to me is perfect for someone who ha does have a above or in-ground pool. And they want to fly a drone and also drive it around maybe on their kitchen floor inside the house. This would be great for like a 12-year-old boy. Absolutely perfect. So I'll have a purchase link down in the video description. I'll also try to include one in the pinned comment. And I'll include any coupons. I don't think they gave me any, but usually they'll have a clippable one. So if they do, you want to make sure you use that. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. While you're at it, click that bell. That way you're notified every time I do upload new videos. And as always, guy, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, side, side.